Dr. B, you mentioned one more area you want to make sure we hit oh, on. Yeah. I have two more. So let's put them all on the table and see how we can approach this. Okay. For me, it's leaky gut. I mentioned we would come back to that. And talking about the short chain fatty acids. You got into them early on in the conversation, but they are so critical and so important. I want to make sure people really understand their role before we part ways. Okay. I want to talk about brain gut and stress. So I'm going to interweave these three things into one conversation and then and then we can uh, uh, call it a day for today at least. So, um, okay. So talking about leaky gut, short chain fatty acids, and then I'm going to subsequently get into brain gut a little bit. Uh, what you need to understand is that first of all, your gut is designed to be the place where exchange is taking place with the outside world. Your skin is a is a barrier. Your skin is like a wall. It's supposed to keep things out. The gut is the place where there's a decision. Do we let it in? Do we allow it access to this, this person? Um, or do we push it away and keep it out? And part of that process is the gut barrier. The gut barrier is a single layer of cells. You can think of it like the wall of a castle. And those cells are connected to one another by, um, you know, it's like cement holding two stones together. We call them tight junctions, right? And when the castle wall is intact, that is a, uh, a barrier that is strong, fortified, and it serves the purpose that it was intended which is to make it so that you can make the decision whether or not you want to allow something in as opposed to it just sneaking in regardless of what your decision was. But you can punch holes in that barrier. You know, you can knock a hole into the castle wall and you can disrupt these, what I just said, were tight junctions. And when you do this, you are now allowing, there's a porous nature to what used to be a wall. It's now got holes in it and things can get in and I would use the words intestinal permeability. This is increased intestinal permeability, but it is completely appropriate to call it leaky gut. And this is actually what happens when there's damage to the gut. The um, If you were to describe dysbiosis, dysbiosis is the word that I use for a damaged gut. Okay, what we find in dysbiosis, first of all, most of the time there's going to be a loss of diversity, but Generally speaking, if you were to zoom in, you would see three main things. You would see that there's a decrease of the healthy microbes, like they're not as powerful as they're supposed to be. So those are your soldiers protecting you and they're weak. You would see an increase of the sort of inflammatory microbes. These are sort of like the invading barbarians and they're overrepresented and they're causing havoc. And then the third thing is that you would see this increase in intestinal permeability or leaky gut. There's a breakdown of the gut barrier. And all of these things subsequently basically mean that the gut is not able to function and serve its purpose the way that it's supposed to. How do we fix this? How do we walk this back? The answer is short chain fatty acids. So butyrate specifically is one of the short chain fatty acids. And again, just to remind everyone, short chain fatty acids come from fiber intake. Fiber meets microbes and the microbes, those microbes release short chain fatty acids and those short chain fatty acids, they start to heal your body immediately. And when it comes to leaky gut or dysbiosis, they will actually increase the um, growth of the healthy anti-inflammatory microbes because the anti-inflammatory microbes are the short chain fatty acid producing microbes. So they are basically, you're galvanizing them they will directly suppress the inflammatory microbes. So they have research where short chain fatty acids reduce E. coli, salmonella, shigella. And then we're talking about these tight junctions that are supposed to hold the wall together and they're broken. They can be repaired. And repairing them is with butyrate. So the healing effects of the short chain fatty acids include correcting dysbiosis. And dysbiosis is where many of these issues that we talk about involving digestion, metabolism, the immune system, hormones, mood, brain health, that's the origin of what we're talking about with many of these issues. 
short chain fatty acids have healing effects throughout the entire body because of their ability to reverse this dysbiosis because of their body, their, their ability to affect the immune system. So in the colon, they will not only correct dysbiosis and repair leaky gut, but they also will directly prevent colon cancer through a number of different mechanisms. But beyond the colon, they affect your metabolism, for example, lowering blood pressure, lowering cholesterol, improving insulin sensitivity, which means reversing diabetes, reducing risk of heart disease. That's our number one killer. They affect our immune system. We have evidence that short-chain fatty acids reduce your likelihood for autoimmune disease, allergic disease. There's, we, we may not have time to talk about it in great detail, but there's evidence with regard to COVID-19. Um, they affect your hormones. And then in terms of mood or brain health and the brain-gut connection, short-chain fatty acids get into the bloodstream. And they're not just a gut thing. They actually spread throughout the entire body. And if you go up to the brain, the brain has a barrier too. So there's the gut barrier and then there's the blood brain barrier. And the blood brain barrier, it turns out, has tight junctions. And when there's breakdown of those tight junctions at the blood brain barrier, people have this feeling of like, my brain is not working the way it's supposed to. And they go to their doctor, they say, I'm having brain fog. And the doctor rolls their eyes, like brain fog, what is that? Well, it exists, clearly. There's a lot of people who have it. Brain fog is a leaky brain. The tight junctions at the blood-brain barrier are broken. How do we repair those? Short-chain fatty acids, butyrate. Once again, they can, they can actually repair them. Um, so there are these ways in which your gut and your brain are intertwined, Jesse. And the final point that I wanted to make real quick is that that intertwined nature between your gut and your brain, the short chain fatty acids are one example of how your gut can affect your brain. But on the flip side, your brain can affect your gut. This is a two way street, not a one directional thing. And um, if you are in a place where there's something in your life that is troubling you, right? And we can use the word trauma. In trauma, we typically apply to things that are like heavy and intense. We all kind of know what those things are. But what if we included in this conversation things that are less heavy and intense, but very impactful because they they cause you distress? And I'm talking about like something like having a job that you hate or being in an unhealthy relationship. Maybe it's not an abusive relationship, but you're not happy in your relationship right? Um, these little things that we all run into as adults that make life challenging. Well, what we have discovered is that um, the gut and the brain, the brain has a way of dealing with stress. And we evolved to have these stress responses for a reason. But there's a price that we pay when we activate the stress response the brain will release a hormone from the pituitary gland called CRH, corticotropin releasing hormone. And this CRH, again, it goes, spreads throughout the body and it, it basically activates the stress response. But if you follow it all the way down to the bottom, it is causing a negative impact on your gut microbiome. This is why in times of stress, like just acutely, I'm not even talking about like some big life thing, just like, hey, uh, you have to go give a big presentation in front of people and that makes you nervous. We get butterflies. And then those butterflies can turn into something bigger. First, a small ball of discomfort. And then that small ball of discomfort becomes a big ball of discomfort, right? And it lives in our gut. That's the brain-gut connection speaking. This is the stress response being activated. This is damage occurring instantaneously to these microbes. And if we think about that sort of thing, but occurring in an ongoing basis, repeatedly, day in, day out, what I'm saying here is that if we have something that's negatively affecting us, you could do everything right. You could, you could exercise and sleep and eat the right foods, eat diversity, eat, eat fermented food, and still have digestive health issues. And this is, this is where 
trauma or stress or things that are negatively affecting us in our lives, you have to turn your attention towards them in order to truly heal. And I think it's an important thing because the reason why I wanted to bring this up is that I personally, as a medical doctor, the greatest healings or like the greatest moments of my career in helping people have not been me telling them you need more fiber. They have been the moments where I take a person who like has something in their life that's negatively affecting them and I help them to understand that that's actually what's causing their problem. And when they fix that, everything else gets better. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. I call this the golden rule because no matter who you are, no matter what dietary pattern you follow, this is something that you can apply. And I think it's very tangible, very easy to follow and can be potentially game changing. for.